service. And so, uh, man, we celebrate that. And uh, I'll just forewarn you, okay, if you're here today and you're far from God, okay, I'm coming for you, all right? So, so like at the end of the service, you got this opportunity to hand go up, and I'm just expecting it. So uh, prepare for that. You'll hear more about that. Um, but uh, uh, welcome to our Easter services. I got to tell you, um, you would assume that as a pastor, that an Easter message would be pretty simple, right? I mean, you know what I'm going to talk about, okay? It's like, how many different ways can I spin the same message year after year? And so you just think that it should be good and automatic, but it actually is one of the most challenging things. And so as pastor, I'm always like, man, how can I tell the story that they already know is coming in a way that seems new? And so uh, for many of you, you kind of know this Easter message, you know what's going to be going down. And so just help me out and just say amen at the appropriate places, okay? And when I get, tell a silly joke, just go ahead and laugh and like help me feel good about it. It'd be great and we'll get through this together. Um, if you're kind of new to church, you're kind of kicking the tires to church, um, um, then I, I really believe this is going to be good. Uh, if you've been in church for a while, may, maybe you've grown up in church your whole life, uh, then I believe that this is going to be really good for you also. And so this is going to be a, a really a great message. So I want to start with a verse that is one of my favorite verses when it comes to Easter. This verse has so much truth and power uh, that, that we need in our lives. And this is what it says in Romans 8:11. It says, "The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you." Okay, it's not a lesser spirit. It's not just like a, a, a copy of it. It's that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. And just as, in the same way, just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, what's he going to do? He will give life to your mortal bodies. That term mortal bodies is the idea that you're in this decay. You're in this state of uh, decay in your life. And yet Jesus and God's going to step in and intervene and change the course and change the path that you're on. And so that's what that is talking about is that the things in your life that are going downward, that are in a spiral, maybe relationships or your mind or your soul or your emotions or, or something you're struggling with, the things that seem to be decaying in your life don't have to stay that way. That the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead can intervene and change the course of your life and take you in a new direction. That is so true. And it says, by the same spirit living within you. That is good news. Go ahead and give God a hand for that. And the reason why we should be so excited about that today is because that verse means that the resurrection is not an event to be celebrated. The resurrection is something that you and I are to experience. See, so, uh, there, are, there are people all over this world uh, uh, today in their time zone, yesterday, whatever, or coming up in a different time zone, whatever it may be, that are gathering together to celebrate the resurrection. There are people who have this great relationship with God that are gathering together. There's people that aren't really sure and just trying to appease their mother or mother-in-law or whatever it may be. And so they're coming. And so no matter where you're at on that journey, here's the truth is that it's not just something we get together to celebrate. My desire for your life is that you experience Experience a resurrection today. Not just celebrate something that happened a long time ago, but that this verse would be true and that you're facing something and going through something that is in decay right now, but today something's going to change. God's going to intervene and God's going to send you on a new course in your relationship or in your soul or in your mind, your emotions, that something is going to shift and yet you're going to experience some life where you thought there was only death. And so I'm excited about that because that is so true about Easter, is it's something that we should be experiencing in our lives. So uh, I was thinking about Easter in, uh, as I was studying and preparing for this Easter message and thinking, okay, how can I make this message really uh, fresh and impact and, and really mean something to people that really already know what I'm talking about? And I was thinking as I was reading the story about the process of our lives. That, that this life that we're living 
we, we go through these stages of life. We go through these different seasons in life and this process that we repeat in life. And in many different areas of life, this happens. And so you'll see this process in relationships and you go through that process and you get done with that process and you kind of have, oh yeah, I can relax now. I went through that. And then something else pops up in your life and you, you go through that process with your finances. You go through that process in your mental state and in these process that we go through. And I, as I was looking at the story of Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection, I saw that process. The same process that you and I go through in different areas of our life, Jesus went through. Jesus was crucified, he died, he is buried, and then he experienced life. And we experience that same process in our lives. And so as I was reading that, it just jumped out at me. And so we're going to look at this process we go through in life. And much of life... It's not about this destination. We can trick ourselves or we get deceived thinking that, man, when I reach here, when this happens, then this is going to be true about my life. Then I can enjoy. Then I can calm down. Then I don't have to be mad at that person or whatever it may be when I get to this place. But you know what? We get there and then there's something else. And so it's about this process, not about this destination. And this is what I know is that no matter where you're at in your relationship with God, whether you are just now starting it or whether you've been doing this since you were two years old and you're retired now, this is what I know is that your relationship with God is a process, not a destination. And so no matter where you're at on that journey of faith, there's a step you need to take. That you're not done, God's not done with you, it's not over for you. There's another step for you to take in that process of life. It's not this destination, you haven't arrived. God has something greater for your life than you've experienced so far. And so what is that step you need to take? And so we're, as we look at this process, I believe God's going to reveal something to you today. This is what it says in 1 Peter 2. 21 through 25, and this is the message translation, and so it may vary a little bit, but you can read it up on the screens. It says, this is the kind of life you've been invited into, the kind of life Christ lived. Okay, so the process he went through in his life, you're invited to be in that process too, although we don't like all of the process because this next part says he suffered everything, all right? And so some of y'all, you're like, yes, that is the process I'm in. It's exactly true. And so, so welcome to Ovation Church, suffer, okay? And so uh, Godspeed, God be with you. See you next week. No, no, there's more to the story, right? But, but that's part of the process. It says that he suffered everything that came his way, the death, the burial, the whole process. He, he, he went through all of it. Why? So you would know that it could be done. Okay, and so don't stop in the process. You can complete the process. You can, you can get to the, to the last part of it. You don't, it can be done, and not only that, and also so that you would know how to. That's important because often in life, we don't know how to do stuff. Right? We make it up. Guys, like, like you will tell your wife, I'll fix the car. You don't know what you're doing, right? right? You're like, yeah, I can fix that door. You have no clue. You have to like, like go online and watch a couple YouTube videos. You're still confused. Then you just use it as an excuse to go to Home Depot to buy tools that you really don't need. You just wanted them, right? And so, so we don't know, but, but we, God is so good that he's shown us how to in life. How to do it, and I love this part. Let's say it together. Step by step. See, it's this process. It's the step by step. And I don't know what step you're on, but you need to keep on stepping. You need to take another step in your life. Maybe relationally, maybe where your finances are concerned, maybe you've quit and given up on a dream that God has given you. There's something in your life, maybe growth spiritually, where you've kind of plateaued. I believe that there's another step for you to take. The process is not finished. The process is not done, and God's still doing this work in your life. And so take the next step. So I was thinking about this process. As I was reading the uh, Easter story, and the process for what we're looking at today starts on a Friday. And we all experience the process of the Friday, the day of darkness, where you experience loss, where you experience 
suffering. You know, Jesus is crucified. And I can, I, I can just imagine the disciples on that Friday and what they experienced and what they felt of that day of darkness where they had put all their hopes, all their expectations. You know, they had convinced themselves, they're like, this must be the Messiah. And they had these expectations about how he was going to rule and how he was going to bring this kingdom. And they had all of these thoughts about what it was going to be like. In fact, some of the disciples were even fighting and arguing for position in this new kingdom about, you know, I'm going to sit next to him and I'm going to have this power and this control. They were so off base, but all of these expectations about who Jesus was and, and that he was this Messiah and the promised one. But then Friday happened. And they experience this loss and this suffering and this pain. And this is what I know is that some of you in here today are living in Friday. You're living in that day of darkness where you've experienced loss and there's heartache and there's some hurt and there's some pain. And that's what you're facing right now. And you're wondering, is it going to change is this all that there is? And it's easy to start feeling hopeless. It's easy to start falling into depression. It's easy to start just thinking, why is any of this even worth it? And you've got this pressure and this pain that you're facing and you're living in this day of darkness, this part of the process that we face in life. And this is what I know is that all of us have faced it. In one way or another, in some form or fashion, we have faced that. Some of you are facing that now in a certain area of life. You know, um, I was thinking about Jesus and some of the pain that he suffered and the, uh, what he went through. And Jesus suffered physical pain. And if you've seen the movies, you've read the story, you've, you've heard the messages, and you know about the physical pain that Jesus went through. That his physical body was ripped apart. That is, his flesh was torn in very brutal ways. There, there's uh, many commentaries that talk about how he wasn't even recognizable. You couldn't tell who he was. He, he was so swollen and so damaged. And I don't know what you're facing today physically, but maybe you're here today and there's this chronic pain. There, there's this ailment that there's no cure for. And you're looking at your life the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, however long it may be, you, you think, I'm going to have to live with this pain physically. And you think, well, nothing's ever going to change. You know, Jesus knows exactly how you feel. Jesus suffered physically. He knows the pain. And it doesn't matter how much uh, prescriptions you take. It doesn't matter. There's always that edge of pain that never goes away. And you live with it constantly. You know what? Jesus knows exactly how you feel. He experienced physical pain. I was thinking, Jesus even suffered emotional pain. Jesus knows what it feels like to be heartbroken. Jesus knows what it feels like to weep. Now I was thinking, Jesus knows what it feels like to be despised. Jesus went through this emotional trauma in his life and felt some of the same ways that you feel. You know, the Bible even describes Jesus as a man of sorrows. You know, we think of Jesus as, you know, performing the miracles and, and doing all these great things, and all of that is true, but he also felt the things that you feel, the emotional turmoil that you face. Jesus knows that. Jesus is familiar with that. You're not isolated and alone. It's not that nobody understands you. Jesus understands. Jesus faced that. He's thinking about the relational pain that Jesus went through. Jesus was betrayed. Jesus had people turn their back on him. Yeah, I was thinking of all the multitudes that followed him. And then as soon as Jesus would say something that they didn't like, they'd leave him like that and forsake him and abandon him. I was thinking of the Pete, Jim, and John, three of the closest disciples to Jesus. And, and if you're familiar, you know what Peter does. And Peter denies him three times and turns his back on him. Judas betrays him. Jesus knew relational pain. And so maybe you're here today 
and you feel abandoned, you don't know why they don't love you anymore. You don't know why they left you. You don't know why they didn't keep their promise to you anymore. You feel like they stabbed you in the back. You feel like you can't trust people. Jesus knows exactly how you feel. I don't know what your day of darkness is and the loss or the suffering that you're feeling, but Jesus knows exactly what you're going through. So what's the lesson to learn? What can we learn from this day of darkness and the pain that we experience in life? This is the lesson. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you have gone through, no matter how bad it hurts or the pain that has been caused, that nothing is greater than the power of Jesus to take that pain and use it for a good purpose. That Jesus can take the ashes of your life and turn it into something beautiful. That's what we can learn from the pain that's in our life. If we'll give it to him, then he will do something amazing with it. That's the lesson we need to take away from the pain that's in our life. This is what it says in Romans 8 28. It says, and we know this, we can be sure of this. We know it, that God causes everything. Say everything. 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 God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to the purposes that he has for them. God will take the pain and the suffering and the bad thing in your life, and God can do something good with it in your life. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. There is no pain that his purpose cannot redeem. There is nothing you've faced. There's nothing you've been through. There is no hurt that can go unused if you put it in his hands. He can take it, and he can do something amazing with it in your life. That Friday, represents that day of darkness. And all of us in here have experienced that at one degree or another. And maybe right now you're not in that day of darkness. You kind of woke up the next morning. You're living in Saturday. Now I was thinking about Saturday for the disciples. They had no idea what was going on. The Saturday's this day of confusion. They didn't know what direction to go in life. Everything they thought they knew, they now don't know. They were confused. This is the thing with the, with the disciples is they didn't know Sunday was coming like we know Sunday's coming. Okay, they were not like outside the tomb Sunday morning counting down 10, 9, like fireworks ready and all. No, that, the, the disciples weren't doing that. Saturday, they're all kind of looking at each other stunned saying, what happened? They're like, how did this happen? You know, as pastor, I I've meet with people that are living in Saturday that are confused And they always ask the why question. And they say, why did this happen to me? So why didn't God prevent this? And they ask these questions. They're confused and they don't know what's going on. And if you're living in that day, then you're asking these questions of, what could I have done differently? Uh, How could I have navigated this relationship differently? How could I have handled my money in a different way so that I didn't lose these things in my life? How could I have prepared for the time of life that I'm in now that I'm not prepared for? And you start thinking all these questions and trying to figure out the puzzles of life. And, And life is full of puzzles that we don't know how to solve. You know, I was thinking about uh, some of the things in life that just don't make sense. That we just don't understand. I was thinking, when I get to heaven, I've got some questions for some of the people in the Bible, some of the characters, and and some of the stories that I read that that I'll read them, and I'm like, what? It's like, why did that? I mean, I'll trust it and everything, but really? It's like, like, why? Like, like I'm going to go to Noah and say, why didn't you stop the cats? Why didn't you just, like, like, turn them, like, like, send them to another boat? Right? It's like, like there's some things that just don't make sense in life. Like, like, why is it when it's the slowest traffic, we call it rush hour? It makes no sense. It's like, why? But in life, when we suffer loss and we go through the day of darkness, we're confused. We might try to pick up the pieces, but we just don't know. What do you do when you can't figure things out? What do you do when you've tried to solve the puzzle? It's not working. 
the disciples, they, they didn't know what to do. The, the Bible says that many of them actually went back to their old lifestyle. They're like, I guess we'll start fishing again. And maybe for you, you, you were on this journey with God, and then something kind of knocked you off course, and, and you had some loss, and you kind of just fell off the course. Maybe you went back to, well, I guess I'll go back to the only thing I know. There's this uh, person in Scripture, you're familiar with King David, you know, David and Goliath, and he then went on to be king of uh, the Israel and people of God, and he wrote many of the Psalms. Well, one of the Psalms was written by his worship leader, his, his version of Philip, right? And uh, uh, his worship leader, Asher, wrote some of the songs that are in Psalms. And there's this one that Asher wrote, and it, really he's complaining. I mean, he's, he's got a bad attitude, and he's just venting to God. And he's saying, I don't understand why this is like that. And I don't understand why this is like that, God. And it's not really fair that this is happening. And he was really mad because it appeared to him that he was trying to live righteous, but bad things were happening to him. But then he looks at all these unrighteous people and wicked people, and they seem to be getting along okay. And they seem to be having success. And he's upset about that. And he says, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why I'm trying my best to live for you and things aren't going going very well for me. And so he's singing about this and he's writing this song, complaining to God. And then he gets to this point in scripture. In Psalm 73, 16 and 17, and he says, but, say but, but, but when I considered how to understand this, it was too great an effort for me and too painful. Some of you are like that. You can't figure it out and it hurts. There's some pain. But then he says in verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood. Here's the thing is that when you're in that day of confusion and you think God is nowhere to be found, he's right there waiting for you to return to him. He's right there waiting for you to give your heart to him and lean your heart into him. And as soon as you do that, and as soon as you turn your focus to him, things start to make sense in life. It's not that all your problems disappear. It's not that you now see all the steps you need to take, but all of the sudden there's this calm and there's this peace and there's this assurance that you're going to be okay. You don't know what the circumstances are going to do. Some of those may never change. Some of them may not you know, turn out the way you want, but you know for sure that God's got your back and you're going to be okay. And so if you're in that moment today, if you're living in the day of confusion, and you've been saying, why God? Where are you, God? If God was with me, this wouldn't have happened to me. And whatever that commotion and chaos is in your life, turn to God, and he will give you some peace and some calm in the chaos that you're facing. That's the promise we have in scripture. And so we need to turn our attention to God in that moment. And when you do that, God starts moving in your life in a, in a spectacular way. You know, and, th and this, is, uh, this is what is so amazing about Saturdays. And right now, maybe you're living in this Saturday, and there's this confusion, and, and you can't really see what's going to happen, and you're trying to figure out the puzzle of your future, and you don't really know. And you just suffered some loss or the day of darkness, and you think that it's hopeless, and that's done, and that's over. It's easy in that moment to start feeling hopeless and depressed. But I know that in your life that God is doing for you exactly what Jesus was doing for the disciples on Saturday. Because Jesus was not just dead in a tomb. His body was there, but Jesus was somewhere else. 
On Saturday, when it seemed hopeless, on Saturday, when it's confusing and we don't know what to do, Jesus is working behind the scenes. See, Jesus was in the belly of hell, stripping Satan of the keys of death and hell, and Jesus was securing victory behind the scenes. The disciples didn't know what Jesus was working on, and you might be struggling today, but Jesus is working on something for you, and Sunday's on the way. Friday is behind you, you're living in Saturday, but Sunday is about to show up, and Jesus is securing your victory today. So even though you can't see what he's doing, even though it may be confusing, have a little faith. Hold on. Don't quit. Don't give up. God's about to show up, and there's going to come a Sunday that is resurrection day. There's a day of resurrection that is coming for you, and I hope, I pray for some of you that's today. I believe for some of you, you've been suffering for long enough. You've been waiting and confused and wondering, but today is a new day. The sun came up in two different ways this morning, and God's about to move in your life and bring some life where you thought there was death, bring some hope where it seemed hopeless, and God's going to heal some things in your life. There's this resurrection day that we can experience. See, the process isn't over on Friday. The process isn't over on Saturday. See, the process isn't over until God shows up and does something in your life. And I'm praying that that's today for many of you. And I don't know what you're going through physically or uh, financially or relationally or mentally or with your emotions or, or spiritually, how you're maybe stagnant and just been sitting there. I know this, that there's a step that you can take and God's waiting for you to take that step. And when you take that step, he meets you there and he begins to move in your life. See, Sunday is resurrection day. See, the resurrection is not an event. The resurrection is a person. The resurrection is Jesus. And Jesus is here today and wants to be active in your life if you turn your hearts to him. This, this is what Jesus says in John eleven twenty five 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Then he asks this question. Do you believe this? It's that simple. You want to experience the Sunday? It's not about you working for it. You want to experience the resurrection? It's not about you trying to earn it. It's not about you suffering long enough, and then all of a sudden, Sunday just happens. And you're thinking, if I just hold out, then I just get my Sunday. No! You're not promised a Sunday just by waiting. See, the resurrection is a person, and you have to have a relationship with Jesus to experience the resurrection. You can live in Friday over and over and over again your whole life. You can live in Saturday over and over and over again your whole life. The only way you move into Sunday is by believing in Jesus and believing and receiving what Jesus did for you. And so if you're tired of your Friday, if you're tired of your Saturday, you've got to turn your heart to Jesus. You've got to receive what he's done for you and stop trying to figure out the puzzles on your own because you're going to get frustrated. You're going to wear yourself out trying to figure out the puzzle. It doesn't work like that. There's this opportunity today to receive this resurrection in your life and to receive life where there's death in your relationship, so that that mortal body of yours, the thing that's in constant decay right now, Jesus can intervene and step in and bring life there. That's my prayer. That's my prayer is that today you would experience this resurrection. And it's available to you. See, I, I, I told you at the beginning I was coming for you. Some of you today are far from God. Some of you have been living on Friday and, and you're, you're suffering and you're in the pain. Some of you have been living in Saturday and you're just confused and you're trying to figure things out. Today's the day you can move to Sunday. Today is the day you can experience a resurrection. But it's going to require your faith. It's going to require you believing and receiving what Jesus did for you. Let's pray. God, thank you for this message. Thank you that you loved us so much that you gave your only son that he... 
Jesus, you came and you suffered and you paid the debt that I couldn't pay. And God, thank you that I'm not done in this process. Thank you that you didn't leave me in that day of darkness. Thank you that you don't just leave me in that state of confusion. God, today I pray that we experience your resurrection life in every area of our lives today. As we're praying, heads are bowed and eyes are closed and you're here today and it's not by accident. And you can sense this tug inside of your heart and that's God calling you back to himself. You've been distant for too long. You've been trying to figure it out yourself for too long. There's a step you can take this morning and move closer to God. And God's there with open arms. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter your failures. It doesn't matter your mistakes. There's grace. There's forgiveness. It's not about you earning it and being good enough. God's there waiting at that next step, waiting with open arms to receive you. Do you believe? Do you believe this? Maybe you've surrendered your life to Christ before and you just kind of went off track. You've been distant with God for a while. Maybe you're here and you've never really done that. Sure, you sat in church a little bit, but you're not sure if you really ever made that commitment to surrender and say, God, I need you. I've kind of messed things up and God, I can't do this by myself any longer. God, I surrender. If that's you and you're ready to either recommit and say, God, I'm coming back, or you're saying, God, forgive me, I surrender. If that's you, raise your hand right now. I see your hand, thank you, I see your hand. I see your hand, thank you. I see your hand, thank you. Let's all say this together. Heavenly Father, I surrender to you today. I ask you to forgive me. Wipe away my sin. Make me new. Cause a resurrection. Give me life. Take away the death. I'm going to follow you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand this morning.